I'm Celine Latulip, and in this video I'm going to go through a couple of trigonometry examples in processing. So here's some images that show trigonometry and the relationship of the right angle triangle. You may have heard of this Sokotoa, and this is a shorthand for helping you remember the relationship. So here we have a right angle triangle, we've got a point A and a point B, and a distance between them, and an angle. And so typically we are doing one of two things. Either we need to know the coordinates of one point. So we have point A, we have an angle, and we have a distance, and we're trying to calculate what the coordinates are at point B. That's a common thing that we want to do with trigonometry. The second thing that we often want to do with trigonometry is we have both points um, and we need to calculate the angle. So imagine we have point A, we have point B, we can easily use Pythagoras theorem to get the distance between those two angles or between these two points, but then we need to calculate what this angle is. And so we use trigonometry to calculate the angle. So to refresh, so means sine equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. So if we take the sine of the angle, that is equal to this opposite side divided by this, um, divided by the hypotenuse here. Um, and we can rearrange that equation. So if we know the angle, we can take the sine of the angle and multiply it by the hypotenuse, and that will give us the length of this opposite side. Ka in the Sokatoa is cos of the angle equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So we can again rearrange this equation. If we have the angle, we can do cos of the angle multiplied by the hypotenuse, and that will give us the length of the adjacent side. So we take cos of the angle, multiply it by the hypotenuse, this will give us the length of this side. So those are the two things that we use when we need to get the other point, the coordinates of the other point, and we have the angle. Um, Toa in the Soka Toa uh, memory game is tan equals opposite over adjacent. So tan of the angle is equal to the length of the opposite side over divided by the length of the adjacent side. And we can rearrange this equation in the sense that we can get the arctan um, or the inverse tan um, and use that to actually solve for the angle. So arctan of the opposite over the adjacent gives us the actual angle. So we use this inverse tan or arctan function when we actually have both points, and so we know the length of these two sides, but we need to solve for the angle. Okay, so let's see what this looks like when we try to program with this in processing. So one point is that processing does everything in radians, and you're probably used to working with degrees. So one full revolution in radians is 2 pi. Um, pi equals 180 degrees, so it's basically like half the circle. Um, and processing has a built-in constant, so you can always type capital PI, and that will give you pi. You also have like 2 pi and half pi and quarter pi. Those constants exist, and you can use them. Now. What I'm going to tell you is that if you're working properly, you typically don't need to worry about this. You don't need to be converting between radians and degrees. If you're doing all of your trigonometry, it should all be done in radians, and you shouldn't be trying to convert into degrees and do something with that and then convert back to radians. That's a disaster. You should be avoiding that. So really, to me, the only time you need to think about this or specify this is if you say, I want something to start at 90 degrees, and you know 90 degrees because that's the way you think, you can say float of an angle equals radians of 90. So you're putting in your angle in degrees here. This converts it to radians and stores that in this variable um, angle, and it stores it in radian form. And then you can use it in trigonometry and not have to worry about it. All right, so here are the three main important built-in trig functions that you'll most likely be using, sine, cos, and atan2. So Sine takes a float angle, so again, this is going to be in radians, and it returns a float, and that's the length of the opposite side of that triangle. Okay, so we're going to use sine when we have the angle and we have one point and we want to get the opposite side, the length of that opposite side, so that we can figure out what the y coordinate of the other point is. All right, and cos also takes in an angle 
again, this is a, going to have to be a float and it's going to be um, specified in radians and it returns a float and it's going to give you the length of the adjacent side. So we've got a point here. It's going to give you the length of this adjacent side um, given a hypotenuse and um, this angle. Okay. And then a tan 2 is the other trigonometry function built in that we're going to use and we're going to have to give it two floats. We're going to give it the length of the opposite side and the length of the adjacent side. And the order of these two matter. You've got to put the length of the opposite side, the y length here, and the x length second. Um, and you pass that into a tan 2 and it returns a float, which is the angle in radians. Okay. So let's go through. There's two different examples. So the first example is we have point x and y. We know a distance or the length of the hypotenuse. Um, the radius, whatever you want to call it, and we know the angle. And what we're trying to do is what's the x and y coordinates of this point up here? So this is a really common um, thing that you're going to be trying to solve. And so we're going to use sine and cos to do this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop over into my processing and show you what this looks like. So here's my trig exploration. And what we have here is we've created a a window that's 500 by 500. We've got a slow frame rate here just because I want you to be able to see this go slowly. Um, we create a background and we draw the center dot. So dot x dot y is this point here. And then we use our trig functions to calculate the different sides. So we're calculating adjacent using cos of the angle. So we've got um, an angle and we're going to calculate the length of this side. That's going to be the adjacent side. And we're multiplying by orbit distance. And that, in this case, is going to be this length of the hypotenuse. Because what we're trying to do is draw a dot and have another dot that orbits around it. And so we know how far away we want the thing to be orbiting. And that's the orbit distance. So we multiply that by cos of, of the angle. And we get the length of this adjacent side. Similarly, for the opposite side, we multiply that hypotenuse, the distance, the orbit distance, by sine of the angle, and that gives us the length of the opposite side, the y difference. Oops. Then we are going to draw a circle, and what we're going to do is we're going to take the adjacent and the opposite. We're going to add them to the original dot, and that way we get them offset from this dot. If we don't add them to that, we're going to get the adjacent and opposite orbiting basically the origin, which is the top left corner of the, of the processing canvas. And we don't want that. We want these things to be with respect to our point dot x and dot y. Okay. And if we just did this and we run this, what we'll see is we have our dot and we have our point over here. Um, the starting angle is zero. So that angle is zero. So it doesn't look very interesting. But if I click in the canvas, I'm going to add to that angle. I'm going to add 0 0.2 in radians to that angle. And what we see is that it moves down. And down in the console, I'm printing out the length of the adjacent side. In this case, the length of this adjacent triangle is 98. And the length of the opposite side is 19. So it's 19 pixels down, 98 pixels across. If I click again, We've got another angle. We go down a little bit further. Now we're only 92 across and we're 38 down. And if I click again, you'll see now we're 82 across, we're 56 down. So you can see that we can keep doing this and it goes around and the X and Y or the adjacent and opposite sides are printing out. Um, okay, so that's the first example. I'm going to close that. And then we're going to look at the second example. And the second example is when we have two points, x1, y1, x2, y2, or whatever they are called, we can easily calculate the distance between them. We use Pythagorean's theorem. There's a distance function built into processing we can use. So we can calculate that easily, but then we need to get this angle, and that's where we use a tan 2. So let's look at an example of that. I'm going to bring up that processing window. There go. Okay, so this is the second trig exploration. So again, we start, we have a dot that's in the center of our canvas, um, and we draw a background, we draw the dot, and 
then we have um, we want to get the angle between where the mouse cursor is and that center dot so this is going to be dynamic it's going to be calculating the angle between where your mouse pointer is and where that center dot is and so we pass in the y the opposite side first so that's the difference between mouse y and dot y and we pass in the x the adjacent side second that's the difference between mouse x and dot x so that will give us the angle and then we can actually use that angle to do something. So first what we're going to do, what we want to do is draw a right angle triangle um, using the angle, but we want it to be half the size of the difference between where the center point is and where the mouse is. So um, the tip of the triangle will be halfway between the center dot and the mouse pointer. So the way we do this is we get the distance between the mouse pointer and the center point using the distance function. Then we're going to cut that in half, and now we're going to use the, our, our um, cos and sine, actually, with this new half distance, and we're going to calculate new lengths of adjacent and opposite sides, and we're going to use those to draw this triangle. So the triangle is drawn from the center point, and then along the horizontal, we're just adding the adjacent to the x value and keeping the y value the same, so that gives us this horizontal point, and then we're adding the adjacent to the x and the opposite to the y to give us this point. And this is going to be halfway between the center point and wherever the, the mouse pointer is. So let's have a look at this and see what it looks like. Okay, so here we go. Right now the center the, the mouse cursor is really far away from the center point, and the top of that triangle is halfway between the center point and where the mouse pointer is. And we're seeing that. As we get closer, it gets smaller as we get far away. And so we are calculating the angle dynamically between the mouse pointer and the center point. And then we are cutting that hypotenuse in half and recalculating the length of the opposite side and the adjacent side to draw this smaller triangle. Okay, so hopefully that helps give an example of how you might use a tan 2 to get the angle and then actually use that angle to pass in and draw a different triangle based on a different hypotenuse length. All right, thanks very much for watching.